yeah, that's good. It, Whoa, got it. It was just two. showing me whoever was talking. <laughs> okay, it's part two. We've come straight back in seconds later, and from continuity reasons, I've changed the record behind me. So, the, oh, uh, canny. Just to confuse people, the sort of thing that people. Birthday have. party. Yeah, I've just thought, you know, for the hell of it. There you go. Switch it Ooh. up. Yeah. Because um, actually, I think the bass playing in the birthday party is not dissimilar to what you get up to there. I've also opened the window. Yeah, I'd say. It's boiling in there. <laughs> but the dog has gone mental at barking at, at motorbikes. He really hates motorbikes. So. What is he? Yeah, I'm blaming. <laughs> Motorbikes and wheelchair. I mean, uh, yeah, wheelchairs. Really? Ooh. Uh, I know. It's, it's, yeah. awkward. it's awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think the bass playing in the birthday party is not, is, again, it's uh, potentially something that I can hear when Bill Trump playing. Yeah, there's definitely stuff there that I, I enjoy when I, there's bass lines I quite enjoy when I listen to the birthday party. I think my favourite birthday party bass line is probably Roland around in that stuff. If you know that song. Um, I, might, I don't know. I don't. And this is, to be honest, this is the only thing I've got by them. I don't, you know, I, uh, I should get more really, shouldn't I? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're quite, they're, the other album, whatever it's called, uh, is, uh, it's, it's quite different sounding to Junkyard and it's well worth listening to. What's it called? It's got King Ink on it, and uh, but anyway, right. I remember. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Um, someone, will, someone will comment and say, "You watch." Yeah, I'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got the Peel sessions. We put the, the uh, birthday party Peel sessions EP is good. Yeah, that's well good. I've, yeah. I've got that somewhere, but I can't be asked trying to find it now. No, no, no. no. Man alive, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh joe hit me with a bargain find whilst we're looking at emlyn's armpits ah, but I, <laughs> yeah. I, I can't remember how much this one cost but i know it must have been a bargain because again it was in the mid 80s while i was still at school so like about 16 or so and uh, i remember finding it in a second hand shop in colchester which is a uh, metal box by pill Oh, a classic. Uh, I can't remember how much it was, but it's enough that someone who was at school could afford to buy it. So I, I remember being amazed. I'd never ever seen it. Previous to that, I only had I had that version, you know, the second edition version. Mm. Uh, I'd had that for a while, but then, and I'd only read about the metal box one, and I saw it in the second hand shop, and I'm like, no way. Um, so yeah, got that. The only thing that's down with, wrong with it is it doesn't have the uh, track listing inside, but that doesn't matter, does it? I have a question about that version then, because yeah. I've, well, I've never seen one. I've never like opened one up. Oh yeah. What are the well, records? How much in? did you get it for? I can't remember. I cannot remember, but I know it's enough I could afford it. Basically, it comes with a uh, round oh, dust sleeves, which is quite a chuckle. Yeah. But then each of the records is a different colour inside. So, like there's a black one, and on the other side, oh then it's red, and then I think there's a blue one in here as well. Anyway, there's three, there's, there's three records. It's at 45 RPM. Apparently, it's so it could get, the, you know, the deeper bass grooves or whatever, which is uh, definitely came in handy with. So I remember when I first got this version of it with the first song, Albatross, I remember it skipping on my record player because the bass was just so sodding bassy. It was, it was bizarre. Whereas, uh, yeah, probably just a crap record player because, you know. Hey, well, I, I've got records to do that now. I've got a bug album pressure right I play that album there's a few songs on there where the bass is just so sort of it just i don't know what the hell doing, but it just shoots the needle off the freaking <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. but, but again this was um i know public image limit you know keith levine etc guitar you know yeah. another influential one and all that sort of stuff it was one of those bands that when you first heard it you thought wow you can just make a load of you know, weird noise on your guitar and it can still be songs. Uh, even though it's probably all very well planned, I don't know, who knows, but it just sounds like it's make a load of weird noise, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, on some songs anyway, but... So, yeah, you know, that was a very, uh, uh, you know, pivotal album or whatever. But uh, it was... I, I can't... The noise, I can't remember how much it was. I just know that I could afford it at the time. At the time, it seemed like, whoa, this must be a total bargain because I can afford it. 
Yeah, but it wouldn't be surprised if they sell for a lot of money these days. Yeah. They won't have reissued it in the metal box like that. But... Yeah. I think it is expensive. I, I wouldn't know, but I've got, I have a feeling it is. Is it, is it just oh. it, 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 like the colour of that tin? I've always thought yeah. it was going to be a bright silver, but that looks quite sort of... Um... It probably was once bright silver. If, if it's quite tarnished, but if you look, there is some sort of more silvery stuff under it there, you see. Let's stick on it. Oh, metal one. Look at that. I've never noticed that. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's quite tarnished. So I reckon it probably was once uh, shiny. But um, certainly isn't anymore. That's for sure. But, yeah. And uh, Emily, bargain find. Bargain find. I don't really have. I've not really managed to uh, come across any particular bargains. Um, I just. I was looking at my records earlier. And I found uh, that I had a copy of Love Sexy that started at ten pounds, and it was reduced to nine, reduced to eight, reduced to seven, reduced to six, and I got it reduced to two pounds. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is from Reckless bargain. Records. <laughs> I like the fact you've got the whole but, history of the production. Yeah, they, it's got all the. Uh, they used to have these these grids on the uh, the price label, yeah. and they yeah. they used to just have a little square where they reduce the price. There oh, you go. Yeah. Like yeah, there you go. Yeah. How much was that television one then? I thought uh, it was it was nine, and then it was <laughs> eight, and then it ended oh, up being seven. <laughs> oh, there you, go. there you go. If you'd held out a few more weeks, it'd be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, depressing to watch your own record go down to sort of 25p from a tenner over a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Actually, don't tell Gordon, but I've got like a Lord's album, which is kind of along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's see. Oh, brilliant. Hola. Here we, here we go. Ooh. It's, it doesn't actually say the final price, but um, oh, it's, it looks I think worse. it was like 50p to a pound. <laughs> that's a... Brilliant. Oh, that's great. But it's a bloody brilliant album as well. It's well, a proper yeah. bargain. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. But there you go. That and Love Sexy. See, some, some of them in the same vein as a <laughs> yeah. <Prince> and... <laughs> I mean, I've got other albums, which I've, I've got loads of albums, which I bought for 50p, which uh, like, Mass produced records that are just brilliant, and that is a total. I mean, rumors for 50p, everyone can go to Boot Sale and get rumors for 50p, and they should. And loads of Genesis records I've got that were 50p at the boot sales, but like, um, it's you can't beat a, a, that kind of bargain, yeah. <laughs> even though everyone can get the same deal. It's uh, you shouldn't, you should never spend more than 50p to a pound on rumors because it's. <laughs> It's, um, <laughs> that's the going price yeah. and it's a brilliant record that's a bilge pump t-shirt right there if you'd never spend more than 50 people on the rumours bilge pump yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah very good very good talk, talking about actually just cheap records I remember the um, first copy I got of um, Flowers of Romance by Public Image Limited I remember that was new in WH Smith's for £2.49 at the time, it, it, that brand, it was actually sold in Smiths at £2.49. It's like, that, you know, that was a world, the whole era of bargain records back in the 80s, wasn't it? it was, uh, I seem to remember some sticker, like, it's some like special lightweight vinyl or something weird like that. It's some, some bargain sticker it had on. I don't know, Virgin were like reissuing records really cheaply or something. But that would have probably been mid 80s or something, but yeah. Yeah, well, records were a lot cheaper then, and now they're quite. Yeah, cheap. definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like there's no, I've said before, but there's no way that, like, as I, you know, I might have bought an Iron Maiden record for three forty nine in Smiths when I was yeah. fourteen. So that's 1988. There's no yeah, way I... that, that that has gone up in value in the same way that, say, bread has got. You know, like, yeah, vinyl's gone like this, and bread's gone like this. Like, yeah, yeah, you, like. Like it's not fair. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. The going price in the record shop is it's just yeah crazy. But I guess that's what happens when they get rid of it, say it's obsolete, they go, oh, actually, we're going to start selling it again. And so they got rid of all the pressing plants. So it's just loads more expensive. Is it ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and yeah. So what? Am I right in thinking this never came out on record? No, it didn't. When uh, when 
when we did that album, up to that point, Gringo had put all his records out on vinyl. And when it came to our one coming out, Let Me Breathe, I remember Gringo saying, oh, nobody's buying vinyl anymore. I'll just do it on CD. And then a few years later, he's put doing stuff on vinyl again. So, yeah, so we missed out on vinyl, which is a shame because, yeah, yeah one day. What, why In fact, uh, Don from Action Beats, a few years ago, was talking about reissuing it himself on his own label on vinyl. But um, he ended up moving to New York and stuff. So I think it probably just sort of fell by the white wayside or whatever. He ended up getting married and had the kid and stuff. So mm. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he'll still do it one day. Matt Gringo should do it. Yeah, maybe you should tell him. Well, Next record store. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be good, wouldn't it, on vinyl? It would be good on vinyl, yeah. It would be good. Remastered. Matt, if only so that I can have it and say I've got it on vinyl because I've got all the others on vinyl. So I'm annoyed I don't have that one on vinyl. Yeah. Matt doesn't watch this. Matt, Matt won't watch this. Yeah, he won't watch this. We can say anything we want about him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Emlyn, record bought on tour. Uh, I can't say I've ever bought a record on tour. I've got no memory of doing that. Um, it's I, I, I can remember browsing record shops and not wanting to be having to look after a record and keep it safe right. <laughs> and 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 being either too hung over to there's something about being hung over and buying records which doesn't match doesn't go well together and <laughs> I, I, just, I just managed not to do that i don't think what about, what um, about uh, being on holiday and like I, I, basically, what I like is the story where you discover a record shop in Crete, or you're on holiday and wherever you might go on holiday, and like, do you know what I mean? I, I like that. Sort of yeah, thing. I've got no. I don't. I can't remember buying a record on holiday either. What do you do? On what do you much. do on holiday? That's all I ever <laughs> do on holiday. <laughs> well, I've been to Crete, but I didn't find a record shop. Oh, and I only would have. That'd have been a brilliant conclusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been to uh, I've been to other Greek places, but no record shops. No, they... Weird. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you must go for like goes. you must go to like see the sights and stuff like that. <laughs> Swim in the sea, yeah. And uh... <laughs> do I find new records at the bottom of the sea? Look for too. Roman ruins, yeah. Oh. How weird! <laughs> like like in that. Like that James Bond episode where they dive down and there's ruins. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm up to. Yeah. That's what you're up to. Then to Kintos, there's some good ruins where they, they had an earthquake in, in the 80s and it unearthed a load of Roman uh, ruins. But yeah. There you go. But then no records emerged. <laughs> <laughs> what did the Romans do? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Crazy. Oh, Hello, yeah. go on. You come save the day here. You have, I know. Well, I, I have bought some extra tour. Referring back, remember when earlier you asked about that Red Monkey tour? Back in, I, I back did in, buy back a lot of records. Day. Yeah. I, I did buy a lot of records of that. Uh, one that I thought of, one that was actually also a total bargain, was a classic one here, Neil Young Decade, the triple album. Uh, I seem to remember I found that in, it might be, is it? Amoeba Records in San Francisco. Oh, you've been it? there. Damn. Yeah. Really great big warehouse type place. Anyway, uh, it was uh, dead, dead cheap or whatever. Anyway, I can't remember if it was there or somewhere else. I don't know. That's the main one I remember going to, actually. But it could have been somewhere in the middle of nowhere. But anyway, yeah, triple album, best of Neil Young. You don't have to then listen to all of the albums and go for all the sort of crap songs that are on some of the albums. But uh, no, it's excellent best of, basically. But... Uh, yeah, so uh, to uh, to paraphrase Alan Partridge, the best of Neil Young. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> what's your favourite Beatles album? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Exactly, yeah. But no, I remember getting that on tour and being very pleased because it's one of those things that I'd never seen in the record shop in England. And so I saw it, I was like, ah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, I'll have that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've always liked with Emlyn says, normally on tour, I'm with him, you sort of... Uh, I wouldn't want to be lugging a record round if I put it in the back of a van, it'll get snapped in half or something. Like uh, Emlyn's bass did once. It's all we ever do is, is we'll drive 
we go out of our way to go via record shops to the next gig. No. Yeah, so it's, I don't know. We, we, there's always a space in the van for that stuff. We end up right. sacrific sacrificing things like, uh, I don't know, uh, Merc. One of your own records. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stick yeah. that one and replace it with this. <laughs> yeah, shut the hate glasses out of the window. Yeah, exactly. It's more or... love sexy for 25p. <laughs> I mean, these days I've got a nice hard case for our merch, for our records, and I could, uh, if I did find my way to a record shop, I could probably sneak sneak it in there and it'd be, it would be safe. But yeah. Have you, yeah. have, have Bilge Pump ever played, I know the answer probably, but have talk about yeah. Bilge Pump playing in record shops. Yep, yeah. same one as you, Huddersfield. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was an interesting one, wasn't it, Emlyn? It was, yeah. It was like, it was uh, probably not as good as Spinal Tap's puppet show uh, concert. <laughs> 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 we didn't get booed off. <laughs> but, but we also didn't we got have tolerated. anyone. We didn't have anyone who worked there but knew we were playing either. We turned up and nobody seemed to know anything about it. It turned out the guy that had booked it was off ill. Was he off ill or something like that? Or he wasn't I think he was off sick, yeah. And so we just yes. had to set up ourselves. We had to repair the PA before we played. Oh, like, it's, we had to set the PA up. So it's, we're talking about vinyl tapping. Uh, yeah, vinyl tapping. I said, I and mean, it's a great little shop, definitely. But we had to do the same. There yeah, was yeah. zero organisation. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, it was like, can you lads set it all up? And we're like, okay, <laughs> we're setting a PA up and trying to make a stage out of whatever the hell. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, Basically, okay. someone who worked there just showed us down and said, oh, I've got to go back to the till. And uh, that was it. We had to just sort of bumble around and try and get the gig going <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at like yeah. two in the afternoon. Yeah, and then we played really, of course, you know, and, and an okay number of people turned up. And then when we finished, we're sort of like, see you later. The person might be to us, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it was a right laugh. But yeah, it was interesting. And that was just on our way to a gig in Manchester, I think, wasn't it? Um, yep. Yeah, we, we were going from Milton Keynes to Manchester. And we stopped off there on the way to do that. And uh, the Manchester gig was excellent that evening. That was really good. But it was, We it played was... in Crash Records. Oh, we did, yeah. We played in Crash Records once. Well, that was good. Yeah, I liked that one. That was good. That's in Crash At Records. least they knew we were coming. They, yeah. they knew we were coming to do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and they welcomed us. It was in Leeds. I can't remember the occasion or why that, that a gig was happening. But, um, yeah, it was down, down in the basement of Crash Records. Yeah. When, when the last album came out, they asked, uh, someone got in touch with Mac Gringo, asked us to play in Jumbo Records as well. But we couldn't do it because we were off on tour that week because the album was coming out. So we had to say no, so we never did that one. But uh, I think um, when we did Vinyl Tap, we played Leeds that evening. and, and Yeah, we, we saw you in Leeds that evening, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you were making up around... 20% of the audience by being there. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it was more than that. There was no okay turnout, I think, wasn't it? it was, the room was full, fairly. I, I, it, could, it was pretty uh, a small room, but it was yeah. quite quite busy. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, it was a good night. Yeah, we don't really, we've never really played Leeds. Really weird. Like, the, so here's the thing the last four or five times we should have played Leeds, we've either played Bradford or Shipley. Right. You want to play. Play Wharf Chambers next time. Right, okay. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> after after uh, 28 people turning up last time we were in Leeds, I can't imagine anyone will have us back. But um, yeah, no, it was... Uh, you played yeah. that time with Park Chimp, didn't you, the Brudenell? Could you play that or were you not on that one? Uh, when yes. were you split 10 inch? Yeah, like, but that, we're talking 2004. Oh, was it? I thought it was yesterday, that <laughs> <I> thing. <think. laughs> okay. <laughs> 17 yeah. years ago. You played yeah. 17 years ago. That was all right. I remember seeing you at the Fenton years ago and uh, you, you were touring in a camper van and you were going off to a campsite afterwards. You were, you were staying on a campsite. Oh. And you were touring, if I remember rightly, and, and staying in campsites in every, for uh, every gig after every. <laughs> that sounds nice. I'll go with that story. That sounds good. <laughs> Have I made that up? <laughs> 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 yeah. We, we what's just, the, we just, what's oh, the sorry. biggest tour Bilge Pump have done? 
Um, haven't really done any big tours per se. Uh, we we've time. been to Europe a couple of times for a couple of weeks. That's the longest kind of tours we've done of two weeks on the continent. Yeah. Um, but um, we never really did it often enough. We kind of did it every three years. We've done it with gaps of three or four years, and it's like mm. you're starting again each time. People have forgotten <laughs> who you are. And you need totally to go back every year. <laughs> yeah. Never the same people. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You, do need, you do need to keep going back. Yeah. And uh, it's only going to get harder now, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, like, I know that there's... I'm not one of those, I'm not going to, uh, every time there's a scare story I'm right. going online, like going, this is the worst thing ever. And like waving my fists in the air, being angry. Because until anyone actually knows anything. That's true. Yeah. There, no one's, I mean, there's still lockdowns. So no one's actually touring yet anyway. So no, exactly. see what happens. Yeah. Who knows? It might end up, you can just go over like in America in the old days and no one's going to ask what the hell you're doing anyway. Sure. Bunch of, bunch of smelly people in a van. Yeah. That's what I think. And I think that France seems quite welcoming at the minute. Right. And then that's the main border, right? England to France. Yeah. And then, I suppose and then, once you're over that. Like, apart from, like, say, Switzerland and getting into Spain where there's a little border there, like, you don't mm. even know when you've got into Belgium. Like, you just... Yeah. Like, it's not yeah, like... It's Belgium, no, fan, yeah. no fanfare, is there? There's no, like... That's true. <laughs> that's true. Well, I mean, when we went on tour, we... To, to Europe... We were playing in the EU, but there were gigs we did in Switzerland and other yeah. places outside the EU, and we were able to sort of cross the border and, and get yeah. away with it. Um, like Slovakia and all that sort of stuff. Slovenia, no, yeah. Just... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we played Switzerland 2019. And right. Essentially just drove in, played and drove out again. We didn't... It wasn't like rubber gloves on deep cavity search sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it seemed fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell me about, uh, and this is a Chris Summerlin thing, so if he's if he oh, right. leading me As in it's path, one of his questions, man. Yeah. Krill. Is that the game, Krill? That's what he was talking about. Do you remember that, Emlyn? Skateboards and furry fruit. I can't remember the game Krill. No, it, it was it was I, I, it, it, that was more of a more of a Polaris game because uh, it was invented by I think Andy Pollard and basically me Andy Pollard and Neil Turpin and probably Johnny Ford used to play when we were in Polaris. It's, it's a, if that's what he's talking about, it was it was a game where basically we used to have these furry fruits. In the, in the house 97 where we used to live. You, in the you used to have these furry fruits. <laughs> <laughs> we, we they were them. yours. <laughs> They're actually up in the attic still. I've got a bin bag full of them up in the attic. But um, yeah, basically, because I had this one apple that I called Apollos, and I had it in the, in the living room in 97, and everyone used to really like it. And then if people saw them in the charity shops, they'd buy them and give, bring them to our house. And we ended up with apples, strawberries, peaches, pears, just loads of these furry fruit all around the living room. But anyway, we had this game where you basically use a, um, a skateboard, like a cricket bat, and whack the furry fruit. And it's just basically playing tennis with furry fruit and skateboards. But uh, somewhere there's a good photo I came across it recently. There's a photo, I think it might be on the Bill Trump Instagram. There's a photo of me and Neil playing it across some type of barrier type thing somewhere. I think in Switzerland, actually, playing Krill. You can see this furry fruit flying through the air. It's quite good. <laughs> but in fact, yeah, it, it was. It, it was at that, uh, remember that gig, Emlyn, at this squatted railway station in Switzerland? Yeah, in what? Winterthur was next to that big recycling plant. I remember we were playing it there, and unfortunately, I think I uh, probably Pollard whacked it really hard and ended up on the roof of the uh, of this squat. And one of us had just got crawled out of his window onto the roof to rescue this uh, apple. But I don't know if you remember that at all, Emlyn. I don't remember that. No. Uh, Emily must have been just totally ignored Krill and just thought, oh, no, <laughs> yeah, "What are these idiots?" <laughs> yeah. Up to now. Yeah, that, that, that up was to now. Is Chris Sumlin there? He wasn't there, no, but he right. probably heard about Krill. Well, at some point, probably just hanging out. Probably Johnny Ford told him, probably, well, oh, we play Krill with uh, furry <laughs> and skateboards when we're on tour. <laughs> what, what do lords do? 
<laughs> like highlight of my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, maybe... Did someone form a band called Krill or talk there about was, it yeah. after that? Pop- Pollard formed a band called... It was one of those bands that I don't know if it ever did anything or it was just talked about one of those. It's, it's all talk. Yeah, it's all... Uh, yeah, I can't remember who was in Krill. I know that Andy Pollard was definitely in Krill, but I don't know if they ever did anything, but I have to ask Andy Pollard. I'll, I'll text him later. Ask if Krill ever performed <laughs> and who was in it. But yeah, that's Krill. Now, up to now, Emily, you've had a very good memory, but when it comes to Krill... No yeah, I blanked that out. <laughs> Oh, in my mind, I, I was just thinking this. This is a non-event. <laughs> <laughs> Why you talk to Emlyn? I'm gonna see if I can find a photo of Krill occurring. So talk to Emlyn about something. All right. Um... Um, <laughs> if you have got questions or not, I've got. I've got these are my three ten inches. Oh yeah, Ooh. go for it. That I own. One long leg one. Oh, that's good. Isn't it? Nice. One no strings attached one in reverse. What's that? Barry Gray Orchestra themed songs. What's the other one reversed? It's a mirror image. I'm sure it wasn't a mirror image earlier. But anyway, this is Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet and Stingray and Barry Gray Orchestra tunes. And this one is Blood Sausage. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. What are your, thoughts? All good. your thoughts on the 10 inch format? It's a shame it didn't get uh, more widely used because these are all like this Blood Sausage record is like 13 tracks, perfect mini, mini album. Mm. For a mini album, why not have a mini sized record? Same with Long Leg, it's like 10 tracks. No more. No, I agree. 12, 13. But like, yeah, I think it's a good format. And it's a shame I, I only own three of them. I, I must have that Solanke one as well somewhere. Uh, but um, it saves on plastic. You don't need all that plastic. If you all these 12 inches with like a few minutes of tracks is a bit of a waste. That's fair enough. Because this <clears throat> is a first country teasers album. Oh, yeah. ah, cool. Is that on 10 inch? It's a 10 inch. Right. Oh, excellent. You know, excellent. 10 songs. No messing. That's it. It's a strong Ooh. format. Yourself there, Joe. Let's talk 10 inch records. I've got a few 10 inches here. You've already seen this one. Solanke. There you go. See that. Nah. That's, mir- that's not mirror imaged. Was mine mirror imaged when I showed Nothing you? No, but it is when I look at it here. Oh, okay. Then it's. it's very uh, Oh, look, oh at look at that. Yeah, see, mine's yeah. mirror. And actually now, yeah, I haven't really noticed before, but yeah, it is mirror when uh, I... Actually, I've also got the rarest Solanke one. I've got a 12-inch of it. It's the test pressing. Neil gave me the test pressing to Joe, Solanke test pressing. And it's on 12-inch. Look at this, a 10-inch test pressing. This is what was really weird, is that there's a track by another band at the beginning... Then there's a total gap, then Solanke start at that point. Why is that? I know, it's weird, isn't it? And it's the same, on the other side, there's like, what's on the other side? It's weird. It's like, uh, oh yeah, on the other side, yeah, again, there's a track by something else, then the Solanke record starts after a while. Who's I can't remember what's on the other track. What? Or the other track. I'll have to listen to it at some point again. But yes, yeah, so that's weird, isn't it? I've got 12 inch for 10 inch with another song by another band on the Alex Winches. Yeah. I'm gonna have to Neil's have a, probably got another copy of that somewhere. I'm gonna have to have a moment of silence for that. I've done <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a 10 inch test pressing and they had another band on it. Did wow. Neil have to write back and say uh, we don't want this extra track at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> Can you cut yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. put another band on it? We want the record a bit smaller. <laughs> 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 Or did he actually have to get? Did he have to actually cut the plastic off to make them ten yeah, inches? They supplied a pair of scissors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're all cut by hand, hand, hand cut ten inches. But they have a classic ten inches readers, smart uh-huh. raincoats. Of uh, everyone I was uh, going to talk about, which is my favourite ten inch, uh, Battle Surfers, uh, Widower Maker, which is a uh, a classic ten inch. It's classic in many ways. Hmm. One, it was probably the last decent record the Battle Surfers did. Yeah. Um, and then second way it's classic is it came with that insert of all the photos, load of photos from the uh, Reading Festival in 1989, which I was at. 
which was the first time I saw the battle surface at that um, Reading Festival gig. And it was, you know, as you expect, quite a mind blown experience yeah. to uh, see the battle surface at Reading for the first time. It's like, whoa, that's crazy. And uh, that's where well, I think it was the first song they came on, did the first song and smashed up all the guitars in the first song and then carried on with, as far as I remember, unless my memory's wrong, it seems a bit weird they'd smash them up in the first song, but I seem to remember they smashed up all their guitars in the first song. They're like chucking them really high in the air, catching them and just smashed the crap out of them. Then did the rest of the gig. It was amazing, excellent. And then they- <laughs> and, what's, and what's gutting is I was there, but I didn't see it. Wow, no I way. Didn't, I didn't know who the butthole surfers were at the time. <gasps> The, 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 name, the name didn't attract you? <laughs> <laughs> there were lots of random stuff I didn't know who they were and it was just one yeah. of those things. But yeah, the name should have rung alarm bells. Yeah. <laughs> it should have had like yeah. a mental klaxon going off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. So, uh, yeah that, so yeah, that's a classic. And of course, another 10 inch, which I don't actually have here, but it is a classic 10 inch, is uh, Slates by The Fool, obviously, which is a totally classic 10 inch. But I don't have a copy of that, unfortunately, so I can't hold it up. Yeah. Mm. I didn't know that was a 10 inch. Uh, I'd, like, yeah. I'd like a copy of that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's look for one now. Yeah. Actually, it's not, a cheap, it's not a cheap buy. That now, if you want to put it, is it? I bet, I bet these days because, yeah, mm. it seems to be quite lauded these days, doesn't it? Annoyingly, yeah, <laughs> you hate it when people like the things you like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a good job, yeah. bands were in. <laughs> <laughs> um, just the fact it's a 10 inch probably gives it cachet now, as well, even though it's because yeah. it's not a widely used format, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so okay. A record that people wouldn't think that you would like, Emlyn. And I don't know if this is going to be tubular bells again, but go for it. Uh, no, <laughs> um, I would possibly say TLC, Crazy, Sexy, Cool, which I haven't got the record of that. I've got a CD of that somewhere. Oh, yeah. Why? It's in a box. It's in my car box because I used to have a car, and that was the that was basically the only CD I played in that car. <laughs> and the only time I play that CD is in the car. And it's it just whenever I was in the car, it just felt wrong not playing that CD. And uh, it was just the music for the for driving. But, and uh, it was just always suited me because sometimes so you play, you put something on that you think, oh, I really fancy listening to this in the car. And you play it in the car and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work <laughs> out. And uh, I keep going back to that. saying, no, this is, the, this is what I need to play in the car. But, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> but there's, so there's there's a box with all the stuff that you used to have in that car, and it's, it'll be in there with like the uh, the motor oil and the uh, the jump leads, and because I haven't got a car anymore. But w if I do again one day, then I can get the CD going and yeah, yeah. you'll be prepared. <laughs> be no scrubs o'clock. <laughs> 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 oh dear, that's good, isn't it? Uh, Joe, I was not expecting that. Before I do, can I just show you? I, I briefly showed you before, but uh, there's a photo of Krill. <laughs> That's me and Neil with our skateboards doing it across some type of security thing. And that is, I think that was a strawberry. That that nice. One. That'd be strawberry oss. Oh, it's just gone out of focus. Eh? Yeah, that'd That's be a good photo. Whole. A, but yeah, there you go. That that is krill evidence of krill. Anyway, as for records, but you wouldn't expect it's not going to be anywhere near as good as Eminem's this one now, is it? Um, I thought of a few things. Everything I thought of, I thought, well, everyone likes those bands these days. So I thought, like you know, oh, Carpenters, everyone likes Carpenters anyway. Abba, everyone likes Abba these days. Um, eventually, going to come up with out of anything I've got is uh, even everyone likes bees now anyway, so this isn't going to be any good. Uh, bummed by the Happy Mondays on tape. There you go. Which uh, is an amazing album. It's really, really good. I don't think any of their other albums were ever as you know, great as this. It was uh, a, a total classic. The, uh, the guitarist, uh, really great guitar style. I always really liked his guitar playing. Basically, I lived with someone at university in 1989, and he was really into the Happy Mondays, and he kind of got me into them. And uh, I went to see him at the uh, refectory in Leeds in 1989. And 
at the height of Madchester. But um, yeah, really like, I, you know, they gradually obviously went downhill. But uh, I, I still think that album is a really good album. I, I stand by that album. I, I love that album. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Is I can't I can't remember that because it's so long since I've listened to it. Is is it on this album the bit where he uh, shouts, "You're rendering that scaffolding dangerous." Yeah, which <laughs> which gets me to the bastard scaff bastard. Oh, I've, I've never thought of that before, but yeah. <laughs> Whoa, we had a song like scaffolding all those years later. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, it is that. I, I, don't know whether, behind I don't know if it's on the cassette version, but on the vinyl version, the inner sleeve is a saucy photo. Is it? Mm. I can't remember. All, all we've got left of it is just the cassette. We don't even have the uh, don't even have the cover anymore. So that's what we've got, the cassette. So I can't even, I can remember the front cover, but I can't remember what was on the inside of it actually. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so talk to me about what's happening with Bilge Pump. Well, it's on the back burner at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm taking a break from it and... Uh, taking a sabbatical. Yeah. With the COVID, it uh, seems like a natural chance to take a break. A break. Yeah. And, and uh, this is a, 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 a short-term sabbatical or a... Yeah, probably. I don't know. But um, Joe's doing some stuff with Terps. In the Being meantime, in, we'll see what happens there. That'll be interesting. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that. Basis. Uh, yeah. What's that? Is it just? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about what's going on later. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Well, basically, we've not had any kind of practice or anything yet. So you know, it's all very, uh, it's all very new, basically. So we'll see what happens. Basically, over lockdown, I've I've done a load of record a load of crap so we've got to use it for something so we're going to see what happens and uh yeah cool. be interesting to see hopefully it'll be okay awesome. so yeah see what happens mm -hmm. awesome um thanks a lot for doing this what's the t-shirt behind you with the penny farthing That's Just, the lazy. Uh... i'll show you it's the label logo Ah, cool. It's uh, Evil Knievel uh, on a penny farthing that hasn't moved for a long while, hence the um, uh, cobwebs. See, joining it on. Oh, I've never noticed there's cobwebs on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Designed are, these by... available, are these available to buy online? Uh, uh, yeah, there's a couple <laughs> left. For the, for the most part, they're so yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind people. But it was designed by Mr. Tim Farthing, um, him of uh, Reigns and uh, Colossus and Henry Blacker fame. So I really like his work. Yeah, so nice. That's the latest. Which, cool. Yeah. Which one in Colossus was he? What What did he play in the? Uh, he was. Colossus? Uh, he was. Um, he did. He did a ten year stretch, and he was uh, guitar, and a bit of vocal, for about. Right. A was he the Sumlin guitar or the uh, Will guitar? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because there was some, quite a lot of chopping and changing, and I should know the answer. And Chris will probably watch yeah. this go, but I don't know. Yeah. And my next question, I'm going to give you is, well, what are Hey Colossus doing next as well? Because you had your successful album out during lockdown. We've got dates booked. Anyhow, we're not here to talk about us. And plus, the Zoom chat's going to end again. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, thanks a lot, Joe. Thanks a lot, Emlyn. Can we wave goodbye? Thank you. Like, let's wave goodbye, and, and I'll press stop. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>